Good morning, African Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys, and this is an email that we received then one of our admins forwarded me this message. The message reads like this. Hello, my brother. I caught my mother-in-law with my husband. My mother-in-law and my husband, they were busy having sexual intercourse. I am back with my story. To those who have been following, I wrote about the events that happened to me in the 1980s. I am that woman who was saying that she got married into a family that did a lot of rituals. This is the continuation of my story. In the previous post, I had told you how I had my husband and his mom making sounds whilst I was busy sleeping. Then she left the room, and before she left the room, she spoke and she laughed a little bit with her son. She said to her son, she is sleeping. She didn't hear anything. It seemed as if my husband was ashamed of the thing that they were doing. And yes, my husband, he was supposed to be ashamed of himself, who sleeps with their own mother. That was not it. So when my mother-in-law was Speaking with her son, she seemed as if she was busy comforting her. That's why she said, she is sleeping. Your wife did not hear anything. Do not be ashamed, my son. From that time, I looked at my husband and whenever I would look at him, my eyes will be full of hatred. My heart will be full of hatred. I hated him. Whenever my husband would force to have intercourse with me, the words that kept on ringing in my mind were the words that I had heard when she was telling her son not to worry because I was sleeping. I didn't hear anything when they were having intercourse. And whenever my husband would try to be intimate with me, those words will keep on ringing in my mind and most of the times I would not even concentrate on the thing that we will be doing so much that my husband was complaining saying that I am no longer performing his duties as his wife because back in those days when you were having intercourse with your husband you were supposed to please him it was not about pleasing each other it was all about pleasing your husband and if he wanted to do anything with your body you had to accept whatever he wanted to do with you and when you were having intercourse you were supposed to ask him constantly if you were pleasing him or not this was the way things were back in those days i could no longer perform those duties because whenever i would try to perform those duties when my husband was on top of me my mind will keep on getting numb because of the things that i had heard and the things that i had seen it was not an easy thing for me to accept that my own husband, the way that he has intercourse with me, that was the same way that he was having sexual intercourse with his own mother. This was really disgusting. As for my mother-in-law, she totally disgusted me. I kept on asking myself, what kind of people are these people? I remember that my own mother-in-law had molested my own son and my husband did not say anything. In fact, he had defended his own mother. I kept on discovering a lot of crazy stuff that was happening at this homestead. I also remember what that old man had told me. That old man that I had met and he had told me that my daughter, unfortunately, you got married into the wrong family. If only you knew what goes on in that family, you would run away with your life and with the life of your children. But when that old man had told me all of these things, I never understood him. I just thought that maybe it was one of those jealousy people who were in our village. Maybe it was because that old man deemed me to be so beautiful that I didn't deserve to get married into this family. Beside, that old man was someone who had a bad reputation in the village. When he told me that, unfortunately, I had gotten married into the wrong family, I never took him serious. I just thought that he was just a jealous man. And in my heart, 
I then said, this means that the rumors are true. This old man is someone who doesn't learn to mind his own business. So I ignored him when he was trying to warn me. But now I had came to the realization that indeed I had made a mistake. This was true. I had married into a family that had no boundaries and they were not afraid to do anything. I told no one since my family always thought that they had the best son-in-law. And the last time that I had gone back home, they had told me to go back to my matrimonial home. This is what these men that are so abusive do. They make sure that your relatives are well taken care of because sometimes my husband, when he was visiting me from the city, he would not come to me first. He would go and visit my parents. And when he would go to visit my parents, he would leave them with a lot of groceries and money. So my relatives just thought that indeed he was a good man and I was the one who had these evil spirits that were trying to destroy my marriage. Whenever I would try to complain to one of my aunties telling her that I am being abused in this relationship, they would just blame the evil spirits. They would tell me that there was this other auntie of mine. Unfortunately, she had passed away. She was in the same situation. She was beautiful as I was. But the problem was that she allowed the evil spirits to destroy her home. My own family actually forced me to take me to a witch doctor so that a cleansing ceremony can be done on me. This was really tough for me because as a Christian, they told me that if I refused to go to that cleansing ceremony, then it meant that the evil spirits indeed had taken possession of me. And when my parents forced me to go to this cleansing ceremony, my own mother-in-law and my husband, they were really happy. I tried to refuse, but in those days, if you were a woman, you had no power. But the only thing that I did is that when I was being cleansed by that witch doctor, I kept on praying because this was not my choice. I was being forced to do this. After that, I went on a fasting period and I kept on praying because I didn't believe in all of this stuff. But my family did this cleansing ceremony because they wanted to please my husband and his relatives. I stayed in that marriage because I had no way to go and I had lost my job. To all the ladies out there, try to be independent because when I had met my husband, I was an independent woman. I was working. I had a good job. I was able to take care of myself. But the unfortunate part about my story is that when I met my husband, he made sure that he cut me off from the things that made me to be an independent woman. And he turned me into a common village woman that is always dependent on her husband. Whenever my husband was in the city, I had to beg and plead with him every time that I would write a letter. I had to go and give that letter to my mother-in-law so that she can read it first. Well, she didn't know how to read. She would ask one of my sisters-in-law to read the letter for her. Then she would approve if the letter must be sent or not. At that time, I was really living like a slave. So to all the young women out there, make sure that you go to school and you acquire a decent education and try to be independent. It doesn't matter that you have met the love of your life, but try to be independent as much as possible so that when you get married to that love of your life, you will know that you are an independent woman. My sister wives had complaints too about the way that they were being treated and I didn't want to say a lot to them. In this homestead, I didn't trust anyone, but I had this other sister wife, me and her, we were like good friends. There was this other day, she came, then she told me everything that she had seen. She said that she had gone out of her bedroom, this was in the middle of the night, then she had seen our mother-in-law, she was standing in the middle of the compound, she was naked, and when she opened the door and her mother and our mother-in-law just looked at her and she didn't say anything. But what shocked her is that our mother-in-law just disappeared. Then she ran back into her bedroom. 
in the morning when she woke up, the first person that she met, it was our mother-in-law. She was standing at her door. She was about to knock on her door. So she didn't understand everything that she had seen the previous night and everything that had happened the following morning. It was really weird to her, but I was afraid to trust her enough to tell her all of the things that I had seen taking place in this homestead. I needed evidence. I needed people to see what was happening here. Time flew like it always does and seasons changed. I went back to that old man, the same one that had a very bad reputation in the village. One day I went back to him and I apologized for my previous behavior and not trusting all the things that he was trying to tell me. When I went back to that old man, I told him all about my problems and he promised to take me to someone who would help me. December holiday came and back in those days, Christmas was really important because that was the only single day of the year that back in the village we would be able to eat bread and also eat rice. So everyone was always waiting for the December holidays. When the December holiday came and as per the norm, I was given some African herbs to put inside my two-roomed house and right around the house. On this particular night, after I had placed all of those herbs in my house, my mother-in-law came as usual. I was tired of these people and I wanted proof that would let me go. Some days she would come and I could hear and sometimes I could not because whenever my mother-in-law would come, whenever they would have intercourse with my husband, I would be paralyzed. I would feel as if something heavy would be sitting on top of me. But the moment that I would hear that my mother-in-law would have stepped out of the other room, that is when that sleep paralysis would just release me. So on this day, I slept like a baby, only to be woken up by desperate people who wanted to leave the room, but were failing because of those herbs that were given to me. Those herbs, I think that it was confusing my mother-in-law and my husband. With all this commotion that was happening, still I could not wake up. I could clearly hear those people saying that they can't get out of the room. Those people who were in my room were trapped by those herbs that I had placed in the corners of my house. I could clearly hear the desperation in their voices because they could not find the door. As I was sleeping like that, there was someone else who walked into the bedroom where I was sleeping and then that person said, she is the one who did it. I was really afraid because those people that were in my house, they had the intentions to kill me because they were so confused and they knew that I was the one who had placed all of these herbs at the corners of my house and they could not touch those herbs. It seemed as if all of those herbs that I had sprinkled in the corner of my house, it's like whenever they would try to touch them, the herbs were burning them. This is what I heard those people saying. And if you think that being paralyzed when you are asleep is painful, wait until you get sleep paralysis throughout the night. It is really painful. Sometimes I would feel that I am choking, but yet I could not wake up. Sometimes I would feel that I would have wrapped myself with a blanket so much that I would not be able to remove that blanket and I would find it so hard to breathe. That was really painful. This happened to me throughout the night. I woke up at around 6 a.m. and I heard them saying that the sun will be out soon. Let us try to leave, but unfortunately, they could not leave. I wore my clothes, relaxed, and I passed through as if I was going to take the broom to start sweeping the yard. I just looked at them. I greeted them. Good morning, and I will never forget the look on their eyes. Two grown-ups, naked, standing whilst they were holding their hands. They couldn't move an inch, and I left them in the room till the sun was out. I then sent one of my other sister wife to go and get some matches so that we can make fire. When I sent one of my younger sister wife to go and get some matches in my room, I knew everything that I wanted her to see. 
when I sent her, she was confused. She didn't know why I was sending her into my bedroom, but she went because she was the youngest, so she had to respect me. She went to my bedroom to go and collect the matches. That is when she came out of my bedroom screaming. She was screaming out so loud because everything that she had seen in my bedroom, she just pointed at my bedroom. Then everyone who was busy doing their chores left everything that they were doing. Everyone rushed to my bedroom because they thought that she had seen a snake. Because back in that village, there were a lot of poisonous snakes. Everyone just rushed to my bedroom. His brothers, his sisters, and some of my sister's wives, even some of my neighbors, they came because they heard the commotion. So they came to see what was happening. Everyone came to see such a taboo. They then called the elders of the village to undo this, and everyone was really embarrassed. They were undone and they were given some clothes. The whole village came to a standstill. This matter was then taken to the village chief. Your dear listeners, right there was a message that was forwarded to me by one of our admins. Strange things do happen in this world. Please let us meet again in the following episode.